Hey, this is Shelly. I just wanted to check in and tell you a little bit about my process. So, I apologize out of the gate though for the angle on this. Um, kind of limited in how I can set up my camera right now and I think I was trying to get you a more level picture of what I was doing. So, it'll change soon and you'll be able to see a little bit more of what I'm doing. But this piece was meant to be kind of reminiscent of a retro um, 1950s kind of kitsch look with the sign. Um, it's a desert, so of course there's a lot of sand in the foreground. And I'm doing a color blocking, which is large areas of a color. And so, of course, I'm doing the sand right now. Sign says Sunset Motel, and it's got little kind of spacey, I don't know, like accents coming off of it. So it's quite cute, and I'm actually really pleased with how it turned out. Um, I'm using kind of a small brush in this right now because there's some fine line work in it, and you can see I'm going around some of the metal. And there are times that I would just do large color blocking and then draw over the colors that I've done. But this particular piece I just sketched out completely, and so it is not um, just a mass quantity of color and then drawing over it. If you want to do that, that can actually make the background really smooth if you're doing a piece where you have time to let it dry, draw over it, etc. Um, I'm okay in this instance with just painting around everything. That was perfectly fine with me when I started. So, um, yeah, that's where we're at on this scene. Okay, here we are painting the motel, and again, I already have it sketched out, so I'm just taking a small brush and painting it. These are all acrylic paints. They're not that expensive. I think I spent $16 at Target, and part of the reason is because I'm not near my supply of art right now, my art supplies supply, <laughs> and so I wanted more acrylic colors. I've been working in watercolor and gouache but the gouache I've been using is more like watercolor and I wanted something more opaque. And the kit that I got is a really nice, it's Llama, um, let's see, Mondo Llama is the name of it, M-O-N-D-O-L-L-A-M-A. -A. And it's just little bottles of acrylic paint that are all in wonderful order where you can see all the colors and it's really enticing and they don't have to be that fancy. I just wanted to have more of an opaque paint while I'm painting in the scrap, in the uh, not scrapbook, uh, sketchbooks. I really like painting in sketchbook right now. I think that I'm extremely prolific creatively right now and having a sketchbook that I can make small paintings in makes me feel productive, lets me do multiple types of art. So like I said, this one is more of a color blocked graphic look 
to art. I do have a graphic background and so I wanted to do something a little bit more um, flat, graphic, and dramatic. And yeah, so this one's kind of a cute little um, kitschy acrylic painting that I put in my sketchbook. And then today I did one that's more watercolory with the same paints. I just did a wet on wet technique and that means you wet the paper and then you wet the brush and maybe even add a little water to the acrylic to make it more of a thin down feel. And then I used it kind of like a watercolor on the paper and this is a mixed media paper. It's Canson, Canson sketchbook and it's a 9 by 12 so it really makes the one I did today, which is a very watercolory feel of flowers, um, really look like watercolor. And I used, <laughs> believe it or not, I used my um, gingham perfume from Bath and Body Works and that has enough alcohol in it that it separated out the paint today. So I'll probably say this again well, no, the one I did today is not recorded and I haven't been recording as much because I'm actually running behind on what I have recorded. So I need to get a lot of these paintings up on YouTube so that you can see what I've been up to. Anyway, yeah, I did go back in over this right here and added the white. But once I did that, um, when you use more translucent acrylic so in other words the red may need a couple coats because the red being a certain kind of pigment doesn't always come out as opaque, opaque in any type of brand even sometimes yellow is that way um, most times actually and so you might want to add white to the areas you plan on painting a, one of those colors that don't have really that strong opaque paint to them and so that's what I did here because I am going to add in some other colors on top of the white that I'm putting in right now. Okay, so I'll catch back up with you in a minute.
here's a case of a little bit of artistic liberty. You know, the signs when they're vacancy, no vacancy, are probably white with black letters. And I just didn't want that. I really wanted a little bit of color, more color in this painting. So I ended up painting the back of that no vacancy sign pink. And instead of saying no vacancy, it said easy because I just kind of thought it was a cool word to go with like the highway with no one on it. It's an easy path. It's easy to get to the motel. And easy is a good word to live your life by having things come to you easily and, you know, not having a difficult time of it. So it says easy vacancy. And then here I am painting, I don't know if you can tell very well, but the kind of um, dotted shapes with, they're like a triangle with a dot at the end. Those I painted a bright green and the little balls at the end are yellow. And it was my intention to find a color that contrasted for the longer spikes on the sign. And um, they'll come up here in a little bit. Got a small shadow. I didn't really make strong shadows in this piece. Um, when you do shadows, you can add a little bit of blue to indicate shadow because shadows are usually blue based. Um, the light, the cool quality of light in the shadow is usually um, managed with blue in the paint. Anyway, this is like a coyote that I wanted to uh, give a little character to the piece and create him as a character. And I always like drawing animals with this almost like disaffected look on their faces <laughs> where they're like, yeah, I'm just living my best life right here. I'm just being me. And I hope that comes across <laughs> in this. When you see the finished piece, maybe you'll be able to tell what I was doing there. But he's just hanging out against the base of the sign. Nobody's around. No one's bugging him. He's just chilling, enjoying the late afternoon sun and a little bit of shade from the sign. And then the cactus here, I wanted the light from the sunset, which you don't see yet, by the way, <laughs> but it will be in there before it's over. The light is kind of like golden hour, a little bit like that. And so the outline of the cactus is brighter where the sunset's catching the edges and radiating down the side that can be closer to the, where the sun is. And now here I'm putting in the sun. So you can kind of see I put the sun in and it's just last gasp going down on the horizon. And 
I'm not sure if you could really tell what I did, but um, the color above the yellow sun is really the orange, like a deeper golden orange yellow that's right near the palette in this picture. And then I wanted to use some brighter magenta kind of plum color and add that kind of last gasp of the sunset with a few wispy clouds on the horizon. So just adding a bit there. And again, these colors like the yellow needed a lot of building up because it's just so transparent, really. And um, the orange, I suppose, did a little bit, but this is not meant to be a, a shadow as much as the sun kind of radiating on the ground as it goes down. And then just a little bit of reinforcement of the bars that are holding up the sign. So here on the coyote, uh, he's got areas of his fur that are highlighted, of course, and then parts of his body that are in the shadow. So I am adding that in right now. And then a um, little bit of a foxtail. He could be a fox, I suppose, a fox or a coyote. I'm not sure which he is. in the outer rim of his tail, outer edge of everything, just to show how the light's hitting it and coming across. Make him glow a little bit with the light. And then I'm adding his little black eyes and nose. Just kind of uh, enjoying the late afternoon, taking a break pretty cute. I think adding an animal to a still life, like this is mostly just man-made items. There's a cactus, which of course is nature made, but having the life of an animal in a painting just gives it a little something extra and I think it keeps it from being sterile. So I really like to add an animal when I can to my artwork there. Easy vacancy. <laughs> I did some sign painting in my younger years, so I have a little hand doing it, but it's pretty small and the paint isn't the best. But um, yeah, and the rectangles I put for the sign weren't long enough to do the descenders on the lettering but you know what when I taught art classes 
one of the first things I used to tell people, because I had kind of more women than I had men, I would tell them, you don't have to be perfect, and women tend to be perfectionists when it comes to art. And I know I, I like having the details accurate, but I also will randomly not make them that way, and I will let myself do that. It's just cutting yourself a little bit of slack if they're not exactly perfect. And honestly, you know, when you reason through a painting, you're like, oh no, this should be this way because of this particular thing. But like doing a shadow, no, the shadow's not going to cover, you know, that complete area. You have to fan it out and make it look like it's hitting just part of it. Yeah, that's the eye of a person who is trained in light and shadow and all that but there's also the other side of it which is I'm an artist and I like to take artistic license with the rules I like to bend them or eliminate them and sometimes just for my vision and for what I choose to do with the piece I am not going to make the whole painting necessarily accurate to the shadows I am using some license and when I say license it just means that I am I've got a vision and I'm going to create what my vision dictates not necessarily what the rules quote-unquote rules of painting are so yeah there you go and now just adding some lighter pink highlights for the sunset tweaking as it were And I put 2022 because I like the the numbers repeating. Um, I don't know. I just didn't want to do 2021 for some reason. And I think also this might have been my reasoning. Thinking back, I'm not exactly sure, but um, 222 equals six, which is my life number in numerology, and 221 equals five, which is a number of change. And I just think. You know, I wanted this piece to resonate more with me in that regard, so two, two, two. Anyway, you know, nothing that is significant or, you know, unchangeable. It's just, you know, flexible. Staying flexible with your art. It doesn't have to have a reason. Because you like it can be the only reason. And that's all you need. Anyway, here is the final piece. If you are interested in seeing some more of my work, you can go to ShellyOverton.com. That's S-H-E-L-L-E-Y-O-V-E-R-T-O-N.com.